What's up, guys? You're watching the Something Stony Podcast. In the past couple of episodes, we've brought in guests both named Ryan. Mm-hmm. And I always feel weird because I'm about to introduce our guest today. And he's right there. Right? He's been there the whole time. I'm not, it's not like it's a big reveal. It's not like this big dun dun dun. But hey, Ryan Riddle. What's up? <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> What's Hi, up? guys. Hi, people. Uh, it's a lovely evening. Glad it's October. Glad to be yeah, here. Yeah, well, love- Glad it's October. Let me tell you. Uh, let me uh, tell you and our viewers who Ryan Riddle is. Uh, he's a filmmaker. He's a, he did a really, 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 really lovely film called The Music Box, and it's a short, um, which is kind of doing getting a few awards. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. And he's also a, you know a contributor to Sound Scary, which is very lovely. He's associate producer and a. Um, editor and he makes us look pretty so there you go that's that's yeah. ryan riddle look at this it's guy. not taking a lot of work but yeah <laughs> i add to the sexual appeal of jimmy well with the hair yeah for sure it's getting long it's getting long that's what yeah. she said it's always been long yeah are you gonna are you gonna keep no, it i go through for, stages for longer? I'm thinking about it. I kind of like it. I kind of there's a guy uh, that Ryan, you probably know, Justin. I don't know if you know. He works over. There's a, a shop in Burbank um, called Dark Delicacies, the greatest shop. It's like one of my favorite places in the world in the valley. It's all horror memorabilia. It's horror this, horror that, everything horror. And the guy that works there is named Dell Dell Howison. Hell, hell. I, I think I said his name wrong, but either way, it's Dell, and he's a really, really, really wonderful guy, and uh, yeah, so it's a great place. I love it, and uh, they, I, I don't, I, he has really long hair, and he's got, he's, it's all gray, and he looks real cool, and I'm like, I, I like it. Right, delicacies, interesting. Justin, are you in California as well? Yeah, yeah, I live in, uh, I live in Van Nuys. Oh shit! I used to live. In, yeah, Van Nuys. Uh, that was the first place that I lived in for a year and a half when I moved out to California, and then I moved to the Burbank Glendale area. So that's oh, that's quite the upgrade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was needed, man. Uh, nothing. Well, yeah, Van Nuys was. Uh, you know, like the city itself um, is fine, um, but where we lived, it was particularly depressing, and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, getting out of yeah. there, just being around like trees, and yes. there was substantially less amount of garbage. Yeah, um, it's it, there's like pockets of all throughout. It, there's like pockets of nicer residential neighborhoods, and then yeah. like next to it is a pocket of just garbage. Yeah, and, yeah, like, catchiness. Yeah. And I'm lucky enough to where my complex is right like my view is i'm like right behind a nice residential neighborhood so mm. i can like take walks at night and not really have to worry so it's it's yeah i never mind. felt like yeah i never felt unsafe it just um it was just low income you know what i mean yeah, um very. we were on van owen and sepulveda oh i'm on uh van owen and uh See, he, he's new there. He, he's only lived there, what, for a few months now? Or oh, just yeah. A few uh, months, since right? March. Yeah, yeah cool. since March. Since this whole... Jesus Christ, you, like, literally moved in when COVID started. Yeah, I think, um, like, the next week after I had moved my stuff in, everything got shut down. And it, it came at the right time because uh, where I was coming from, I used to live in North Hollywood, uh, but I moved out here with someone that I was dating at the time. <laughs> and uh that fell through and um and and blew up into this whole thing but um it it dragged out all the way uh into march so it's a good thing i caught it when i did and i found this place when i did otherwise i would have had to be one of those people who had to quarantine with an ex <laughs> oh uh, my that's a god that's a great uh concept for a horror movie yeah, absolutely. Horror movie or dark comedy? Yeah. 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 I feel like there's 
That's a you know I always think of I don't know do you guys remember the movie The War of the Roses? No. Nope. Okay, you guys uh, both need to see it. It it was uh, Kathleen Turner, Michael Douglas, and it was about a couple uh, about to get a divorce, and it's about as ugly a divorce you could possibly get. I mean, like literally, they're like trying to kill each other at the. And it's a dark comedy. Danny v- DeVito's like a friend of theirs. Um, I highly recommend the movie. At least I like. It, you know a lot of years ago I don't know if it holds up well but I remember the ending being quite shocking like you're like oh fuck they're not playing they're they're pretty serious and you had these big stars who were you know kind of likable and attractive and interesting and and all hell breaks loose and it's it's a pretty brutal film for a main, fairly mainstream comedy I like this I think, I'm writing I it down. De- I, think, I think Danny DeVito, I want to say he directed it, but I could be wrong. Hmm. You know, and this is something stony, so you never know. My mind is... Yeah, well, it's... I don't know. I, I do appreciate the, I guess, um, willingness to try something new. Back, but like when, when people made movies back then, there were there was all sorts of crazy shit. I mean, a lot of good Mm -hmm. b-movies came out of um like the 80s and 90s and um you ever heard of a movie called tippy toes i've heard of it yeah yeah so it's just it's about um uh matthew mcconaughey is one of the leads and i I forget who the other female lead is but uh, he's He's going to marry his girlfriend, and so he meets her family. He goes to meet her family, but her family is all little people, and she was just kind of like an anomaly. Yeah. And it, yeah, and, but it has the dad, little person of, of the, uh, of, of the soon-to-be wife, is played by Gary Oldman. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, I guess for the whole movie, he's walking on his knees, and it's just like a super disingenuous depiction of little people, and and but and that came out in like two thousand three or some shit. So it, it's like people, it's good to be aware and conscious, and 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 treat things and subjects with respect. But you know, I I kind of feel like. In a lot of ways, we've overcorrected, and so now people just kind of play it too safe. And there's not, there's not insane shit like that that comes out. There needs to be more of that, I think. Yeah, you would not be able to get away with that. No. You would not be able to get away with a lot of that. Not Weirdly, no. yeah, I've been watching like I'm preparing for ironically another podcast I'm doing, and we were talking about Jalo films and. Um, I'm watching a few to like don't torture a duckling uh, uh, phenomena tenebra um, these are movies that are fairly explicit in how they handle not only the the knives and the killing and the slashing and all that but there's a lot of nudity and they uh, you know you watch them and it's kind of like some of them are fairly misogynistic I mean it's it's like oh let me put out my body oh and you're getting stabbed and close up on the you know it it, but it's you have to watch that stuff with that kind of a frame of mind that okay this was another time this is another decade you know i don't think they could get away with making these kinds of films today i don't i don't i have you do you guys know the films i'm talking about have you guys are you guys giallo film fans i haven't even said no if i'm saying that right so (laughs) i think i am but do you know what? Have you seen any of these Italian horror films? Um, maybe I've heard of some or seen clips of some, but I, I I've never like sat and watched one. Mm. What about you, Ryan? You you've seen a few of these, right? You're a fairly knowledgeable, right now. No, <laughs> at least the ones that you've um, uh, mentioned. And to my understanding, yeah, like Giallo, Giallo, Giallo. I think that's. It, it, I hear That's different not versions. Suspiria, is it? Technically, uh, I don't think or Suspiria. Inspired. Yes, inspired. Yeah, Suspiria's Dario Argento is one of the the most notable um, film directors of that that ilk, and uh, 
Suspiria is part of that, but I think there's so more of his other films are are little like the Stendhal syndrome um, phenomena uh, with Jennifer Connelly, by the way. Good movie, actually. But no, but is a great movie. Just don't see they they remade it or they cut it for an American version. I forgot what it was called. Crawler. I forgot what the other name was. It's horrible. It's they just cut all the meat out of it, and Donald Pleasance is in it. I mean, it's really worth seeing. I mean, it's a great movie, but there's a few that are uh, you know I'm watching right now. I and you can watch this too on. Uh, all the one more time. Where can they night. watch it? You cut yeah. it a little bit. <laughs> okay, it's all on Shutter. Hey, Shutter, guys, plug it, dude. Shutter. Yeah, uh, yes. That, yeah, that is the thing too. Like when when I had access to Shutter, um, yeah, there were a lot of those uh, Italian horror films that you could, um, you know, that you had the ability to watch, and yeah, a lot of them are just like hyper violent. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an interesting subgenre. I never really got into them because they're a little, I don't know, kind of awkward you because there's that dubbing that's going on and it's kind of hard to find something that's like naturally um you know with like the original audio and then and and you know you rely on the subtitles but yeah that's not italian horror films as beautiful as they are and, and as um as often uh as you hear about them that's not really something that i've personally gotten into i don't i, I don't think in it, justin to be honest i don't think it'd be your cup of tea I feel like I know you pretty well enough to know that I don't think you'd – I'll recommend a couple to see if you would be into, into it. I, I would say for both of you, the a good one to start would be Phenomena. Uh, Tenebra might be a little too weird. That's also a Dario Argento film. I, you know, I think it was uh, – I'm trying to think the sequel. There was a trilogy of, of which involves Suspiria, and I think it was I'm, – I'm blanking again – I'm something stony, so, so yeah, don't in, mind me too in much. In the uh, the vein <laughs> of of things that, because this conversation comes up a lot of uh, about movies that you couldn't make anymore, or roles that you couldn't have anymore, and mm-hmm. I know one person that has been getting asked about that a lot uh, recently is Robert Downey Jr. for his role in Tropic Thunder. Oh yeah, you want, definitely couldn't do that. But it's such a good performance. Like that's the caveat. Like it's you couldn't do it, and technically, yeah, it's probably not okay to do. Mm. But I, it's he does it so well. He he really commits to it, and you know that's the the difficult thing to argue is like yes, it's offensive, but that's that's the. That's the joke. That's the right. humor. Yeah, it's this actor yeah. that's going to these like ridiculous, um, m- m- th- these ridiculous like measures to yeah. get into these like ridiculous like y- yeah characters and I don't know. There's um, I I actually made a film um, a couple years ago and we have somebody like in brownface and it's oh. hard to think of like how you know we can um, defend that by Right. I mean that. Yeah. Like it. It is offensive and it's in bad taste. But that's the point. <laughs> that's right. the joke. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and another one that I thought of was uh, Nacho Libre. The sure. whole the yeah. whole joke of the movie is that it's Jack Black. Yeah. You know? oh, but yeah. like, it, if it's anyone a can do film it, it's for like families. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 And it holds. They, 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 it's so great. They push yeah. out like on the when you well back when they actually had a Universal Studios tour, they'd always oh we're driving. To- through little mexico or whatever and there's where they film nacho libre so it's it's a movie obviously pretty well accepted by people you know yeah. i think for sure yeah and it's in you know it, it it you have this you have jack black pretending to be this mexican um guy with this like thick accent but mm. i don't know it's in like it's in it's not in good taste but it's in like good uh good spirit and yeah. you know, yeah. it, it the the film in itself is like it's very inoffensive and it's very silly and yeah. it's, you know it's cute. It's not my favorite, but I don't know. It's a it's an interesting topic. I wish we had somebody here who was like, no, fuck that. That is offensive. Yeah, that would be nice. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure somebody like that's the thing. I I feel like 
let, okay, this is, let's go on this. Um, and that, you know, when it comes to movies or being offended by a song or a TV show or a whatever, or a movie you see, I, I find it to be an odd thing for me personally, because I've certainly been offended by movies. Like there's been a couple of movies maybe that I didn't like a joke in, or there was a joke in 21 Jump Street that it, it, it said something about something personal to me, and that that's autism. And I just, I didn't like the joke. I thought it was a shitty joke. And it wasn't even a good joke. They didn't understand what it means. But with that said, I love the movie. I, 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 I think I know for me personally when to say, okay, let the, let the, you know, let your sensitive side go and just, enjoy it for what it is and now you know if it was the whole movie was just jokes about that sure i probably wouldn't be a fan but i just find it like and and, and to be honest if i'm offended by a movie i just it's crazy i just don't watch it yeah that's it well and plus for as many people uh, out there that are like you that that joke is not for them there's people that howled at it there there's an audience for every mm-hmm. joke and every and every type of humor. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, my philosophy is I, I've always been on the side of you know comedians and, and you know when they get all these controversies because it is a joke and mm-hmm. it's it's not up to you to decide what someone's intentions were with what they were saying. Yeah. Totally. Oh, it, well, it's, it's interesting because humor does change. Look, I, let's be honest about it. And, and sometimes that's fine. Like, you know, like you're, we're talking about blackface. It's not funny now. If someone were doing that, we would, I don't think the three of us would laugh. I don't think, I don't know if a lot of people would laugh. I, well, of course, a lot. There, there are certainly pockets of people that would laugh. But I think for, uh, you know, it's just things change. Trends change. We change as human beings. The world changes. That's why, you know, you watch a movie from the 70s and they're like, I, I think it's Back to the Future that like, it's a kid's movie that basically says shit, go to hell, screw up. You know, all these, a lot of yeah. swearing in that movie. If you if you watch it recently, there's a lot of swearing in it. And I'm not saying it's like, they don't, they're not like, hey, fuck you, motherfucker. But it's, it's, it's a little more than you'd expect from, say, I don't know, like, I'm trying to think of something comparable, but I don't know. It's it's a weird thing. I think it's just things change. We change as human beings. We evolve. Yeah, yeah. standards change, expectations change, and mm-hmm. you know, context is very important. Uh, and especially with stuff that <clears throat> ages, that's the context that you need to put into it. Is that the fact that this was made like yeah, like 40 years ago? Yeah. And yeah, like as an audience member, understand that, you know, yeah, times change. And yeah, yeah um, everything that, uh, I don't know, requires an opinion, requires context. And you need to see it uh, as like the big picture. Instead of, yeah, like you were saying, Jimmy, just like this joke. Well, that doesn't, you know, take away from the entire film. Right, Not it all. doesn't speak for the whole film. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's just like with anything else. Everyone likes to... Uh, try to paint everything in black and white and and people do it with pe- other people all the time you know like you mm-hmm. said this you believe in that this is who you are and it's like no human beings as crazy as it is are very complex and dynamic uh, beings that can be a lot of different things at once and it's no different than uh, than, a, than a film or a song you yeah. know it, it's there might be a one little uh, one-off thing that's not you know uh, up to par with political correctness, but you know it, it it's all for entertainment purpose and it's not um, it's not it's not the big picture it's just part of it mm. sure. yeah although the big picture was a good movie though totally I, I also never seen that <laughs> that's a movie actually. Weirdly enough, that's that's a movie you both should see. It's about filmmaking in Hollywood. Kevin Bacon, Jennifer Jason Lee, a few other people. I, I'm I'm I could be wrong on Jennifer Jason Lee, but I'm pretty sure it was Kevin Bacon. It's been a long time since I've seen it. But you know what? I, I kinda wanted to say, speaking of dealing with uh, you know, 
things that are could could be could be controversial. It could be tri- tri- could be a little difficult. Ryan, um, you made a film that's basically you have no real connection to this. You made a film called The Music Box, which deals with a completely different ethnicity and a completely different world. Why did you choose to tell that story? And what 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 was your inspiration? Why why go there for you? Um, I, uh, I, I always had a, a big, um, kind of respect for Japanese horror films. Um, I love the way that they were so, um, concentrated on creating, um, uh, an atmosphere and presenting you with, um, haunting, disturbing images. And I wanted to kind of just give it a shot and see if I had the ability to, you know, make a movie that concentrated on that type of horror. And I thought it would be even more authentic if I casted Japanese actors um, where they were speaking their native language. And yeah, and that, and I just wanted to make, you know, kind of a, an homage um, to this type of filmmaking that I respected so much. And that's uh, that's just what motivated me to do it. It's a really interesting film, and when you first told me about it, I was kind of like, I the the idea of that seemed weird to me, and it seemed like, wow, why would you go there? But uh, Justin, did you get a chance to put you on the spot? Did you get a chance to watch it at all? I did no? not get a chance to watch it. No, you bastard. Well, I think I what we'll try and do is, uh, I guess, we'll link it maybe to this um, to this, this episode. This episode, yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. That way. People can check it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. No? It's a really good movie. <laughs> no. Well, for the next oh, – yeah. um, well, right now, um, I'm concentrated on just uh, submitting it to a bunch of film festivals. And I'm right. Just, right. Yeah, I'm right. just trying to collect, like, laurels and stuff. But, you know, it's already been in the circuit for six months. And I want another six to just kind of, like, get it through, um, you know, the film festivals that I want to submit it to. Yeah. Uh, and then eventually, you know, I – I don't want to release it on YouTube. It would be awesome. Yeah, like if I could like submit it to Shutter, I could submit it to Amazon. You know, these are uh, processes that I'm not very familiar with. But, you know, I I want to start taking myself as a filmmaker a little bit more seriously and just having it on YouTube for anybody to watch. Gotcha. You know, I'll, I'll do it and that's fine. But it would be cool to be able to be like, hey, check out this short film on, you know, whatever streaming platform there is. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I, I want more eyes on it, and it's been great, you know, talking about it. I just did a podcast a couple of days ago where we got to, you, you know, did. discuss it for a minute. But, yeah, I'm proud of it, and it ended up really good, <laughs> better than, you know, I thought before making it. But, yeah, so we'll see where we are in, like, March, um, and then maybe we can start making it a little bit more public. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. I – oh, 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 no. Um, oh, oh. No, but no, I, I, I think that's cool. I there's and especially um I guess in, in the film uh industry, entertainment industry really as a whole, there's this pressure to be humble in your aspirations. And th- that's good, but it, it's also good to allow yourself to be honest and be like like, yeah, this is my passion and, and I don't care how big or small it is, but I also want to achieve great things and i want this to go as far as possible and i want to you know make money off and have a big audience have you know and it's like i i i feel like there's a demographic of people that would sort of shame you for wanting all of you you know like you're a sellout or some kind of bullshit like that but but no it's just it's it's part of the dream you know yeah yeah it it uh it was really difficult because when we were finished with the film we shot it back last um last august and september and when we were finally done with it that's when COVID hit and you know we never got we were able to screen it for all of our crew and our actors and that was like that was the day before bars closed in la so there were a couple yeah it was a sunday right it was uh, something that I something couldn't like make that. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's, um, you know, people didn't show up because they weren't comfortable and, like, we understood. And then, you know, people started taking it a lot more seriously. But, yeah, we never got to, like, you know, 
I haven't been able to like go to these festivals like in person to like be there and like see this thing on a big screen. And it definitely sucks, but you know, it, it's kind of cool because like you think about it and you're like, well, I'm not able to go to like Toronto Film Festival, but now that it's like virtual, you know, I could theoretically buy a ticket and watch that shit online, just see all these yeah. like movies from like other people. And I don't know, like the, the film industry, it is changing just like everything else. And um, it's gonna be interesting with, you know, being a part of that, adapting to it and, um, you know, being able to feel uh, validated in like your efforts, you know, and it is a little um, self-important <laughs> to want to be able to kind of like see other people enjoy your film, but, you know, that's just a part of the process and um, yeah, I'm ready. I'm yeah, I'm ready for more people to see this thing and yeah, just hopefully have it find a platform. Yeah. Yeah. I feel absolutely. like, I feel like I've seen it so many times. I feel like that was, I keep thinking, Oh, it's available, right? It's available. But yeah, it's a, and it, I, I'll just tell you guys, it's a really, it's a really fantastic movie. And he, uh, Justin, you should definitely, you should, you should watch it. It's uh, beautifully yeah. done, beautifully done. And I, I give you props, man. I well, thank do. you. Yeah. Yeah. And whenever you can, man. And, obviously like there are like moments as a filmmaker you see your own work and you're like i wish i had done this differently or or i wish this this had been yeah like done better but you know it's still it's still a short film and it's still something that you know it is kind of practice but it's the biggest thing that i've ever done and um yeah so it's just time to like move on to the next bigger thing and yeah yeah it's cool. uh, it's, it's funny how like that's kind of like the the telltale sign of a, of a true artist is nothing they do is ever good enough you know it, it's like that's that's the 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 fuel that keeps them going into eventual success because they're constantly like trying to one-up themselves because it's nothing is ever good enough and it's i don't know i i, I understand it uh, as an actor i haven't really had the chance to by the time i was able to spread my wings a little bit out here and kind of pursue some some uh auditions uh that's when COVID hit so i'm also excited to um do what i came out here for so yeah yeah and it's always changing man and you're always gonna have to you know change the way that you attack something um so yeah, I mean, best of luck to you, man. I don't know like how that's affecting like auditions or how that's affecting, you know, um, actual like sets for yeah, for somebody yeah. that's like kind of like new to the game and, and um, you know, having to kind of like prove themselves. But yeah, there's a lot of different avenues and I mean, the best yeah. of luck to you. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I, there's always some new streaming platform every day that has their own original series and it, uh, the options are uh, uh, more plentiful than they've ever been. So um, right now it's just a matter of when is it safe to start working again? Sure. Yeah. And they're coming up with a lot of, you know, my filmmaker friends that are actually trying to do shit right now that are actually trying to work. There's a lot of rules. It's very difficult. It's very, there's a lot of issues that have to be safe for them to get the the right to work and I, I think a lot of people maybe are going low budget i don't know you know i i, I can't even imagine like right now it, it's just such a weird fucking time like no matter what you do where you are where you are on the globe where you are anywhere it's like fucking weird but movie making it specifically i feel like it would be I don't know it'd be weird, but people are figuring it out though. There, there's a few interesting things out there that, that I think people are trying to figure out a way to work with it and do it safely. Yeah, Ellie, and it's it's definitely forcing people to be more experimental, which I mm -hmm. think even if things do somehow manage to uh, go completely back to normal, I think uh, techniques and and these different experimental ways of doing things will still be implemented probably just because it's it's something that's actually a little different mm -hmm. um you know and it's it's hard to find something that's totally fresh so i think some of the techniques 
um, doing it in, in during COVID times, I think could uh, provide some new, some new uh, ways. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Speaking of new ways. Um, so I'm very sad guys. Okay. No, I'm very, very sad. Uh, you look very sad. No, I'm I'm sad. I, I was, uh, I'm a huge, um, I think you both know this. I'm a huge Brandy Carlisle fan. I'm like obsessive about this woman. I think she's pretty much the cat's meow when it comes to music. And I still need to listen to those tracks you sent me, Justin. Oh, I, yeah. I will do that. I will yeah. do that. Yeah, but I've been, I've been listening to, uh, so she, she's been doing, speaking of her creative ways to do things. So her and her wife, have two kids and they live on this compound and they they have her band members who all have their families who live in this compound and it's uh somewhere in portland i, I think portland and what they've been doing because they want to play they want to get out there and play music and they want to fucking play shows so they've been doing these shows these live shows and they're well produced and they but they all happen to live there so they can all play together and I got to tell you, man, they, they, there was one tonight. They were going to do a campfire one. And goddamn technology failed it. So it's, I have to wait like 24 hours. Did you already pay for uh, being able to see it? Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I mean, you don't have to pay again. It's, you know, it's, it, it, it's so easy. It's, it's, it's a site called Veeps, which is they, they, they've been doing this. They have a few different artists that they're working with. It's, honestly she did like six of these things or five of these things played an entire album and then did a couple bonus tracks i'm like i like it i, I like veeps i i hope that they uh i don't know how many uh like websites are doing that kind of thing like we should all play in a band if you guys can, yeah, can, you, can i have no instrumental play? talent i uh i oh there we go what are you, what are you doing Oh, a friend gave this to me, and I told myself I'm going to practice and learn it, and I haven't. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I played guitar for like six years. I could probably still do something with it. Okay, let's do it. I, I can't play anything, but I could play like, I could play the, the cowbell. I could do that. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in. Jimmy's pretty great at, uh, I the don't know if you've seen him do karaoke, but... No, okay. He's a good singer. Okay. No, yeah, he can no, hold his no. own. This guy, this guy, Ryan, Justin, when when this is over, we're all going to karaoke okay. because this guy, fucking, you should. I want. I wish you could do it now. Like you, he can do like rap. Like, I literally am. I, I'll be okay. We'll get. We'll go to do karaoke. Right. We'll be pretty drunk. Because that's what you do. That's yeah. how you do karaoke. That sounds yeah. great. Yeah, it's amazing. And so he's he gets on and he does like a what is the track you do? The Dr. Dre one. What, uh, forgot my, about Dre. My go-to is Forgot About Dre. That's forgot about okay. Dre. All right, that's so, uh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. So he does this and he starts going do and and people. I swear to God, it becomes like a concert because you you have people that don't give a shit. Like they're yeah. like like when I perform, people are like. Oh, you're not horrible, but I don't care. I'm gonna do something else. I go look at my phone. But when he's on, people are like, <laughs> like that. It's pretty cool. Well, plus I, I, yeah. the few times that I've been to like karaoke bars, I, I've never really seen people do much rap. So I would right. imagine that would kind of create a special moment in itself. So I, I think my go-to is, um, it's cl it's close to forgot about it's uh, Stan. Oh, nice! Oh, yeah. that's, that's a great. good one. Yeah. Oh my god, I want to hear it. And like, and like, all like full blown act out the whole thing as well. It's a lot of fun. That's uh, yeah. What a what a fucking classic that song is. And and doing it in karaoke, that's kind of like um, open mic night because, and not to like <laughs> downgrade that, it sounds like it, <laughs> but I mean, it, it's very poetic that song is because yes. it's uh, yeah, it's very it's very performance based, and it kind of goes off of the beat. You know what I mean? It, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's very about the um, yeah the way that you perform it, and um, mm, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the delivery. That's uh, that's neat. 
I had, no, doing that. I had no idea. Like I, I I've just developed this like because I'm already like just such a huge fan of Brian doing his. Now I'm just like, dude, I'm in awe. I like need to see you do this. I need to hear you do stand. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, I've only done it once, so. I like part of me is like honestly, I'm thinking, God, if there's a way we could do it now, but clearly we can't legal reasons. You know, we can't. Yeah. I don't think you can do that. But we're I'm I'm forcing you to do that one night when after after we close the cameras, you oh, may boy. do that tonight. Yeah, you're doing that. You may do that tonight. <laughs> what are you drinking, by the way? Um, it is a uh, peach mango a green tea thing oh that's so healthy what are you drinking right it's not healthy it's like one of those crystal light packets oh <laughs> shit okay never yeah. mind <laughs> what uh, you drinking? i am drinking wine i'm drinking Ooh. uh cabernet Sauvignon, yeah. and it's delicious i mean i think it's a wine a little bit more i'm not really drinking beer <laughs> i'm drinking like seltzers and wine now oh you you're yeah. fancy now yeah, I've turned into a 40-year-old woman who just got divorced. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have cats? It feels great. You're so yeah. liberated now. I know, and I'm like, I'm smoking e-cigarettes. Like, I've changed, y'all. I You're know, like, so oh. sophisticated. You're, know. You know what? That's part of you trying to take your filmmaking to the next level. Yeah. You're like, people need to take me seriously, so it's wine and e-cigs. <laughs> what kind of wine? What is, what is your go-to wine, or do you have a go-to wine? Yes, uh, I like to drink red wine. I like to drink Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon, a cab, a nice cab, a cheap <laughs> cab. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not picky. I like red wine. Um, I don't like white wine. My beverages, like I used to be very like, like I liked it sweet. I like fucking like Malibu and Dr Pepper, and oh yeah, Cokes. Uh, yeah, now yeah, now I'm just like red wine and seltzers. I, I used to love IPAs. That was like the last, like, you know, fad of my own. Mm. Before that, it was like stouts, and yeah, I go, I go in like sections, and I just yeah. drink certain things. And it's only a matter of time before I get, you know, tired of this shit, and then yeah. go on to like scotch or something. Uh, scotch is when you want to be super fancy. I, yeah. I've, I've heard, I've known people that they start drinking scotch, and scotch is notoriously terrible. And, but they force themselves to, they, they'll sit there for however long it takes and sip on something that they think is disgusting, but they want to just get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. They just get used to it so they can be sophisticated. Sure. And it took me a while, but like, I finally started liking to just like sip on like whiskey, which is like a little bit of ice and just like drink like a, like a a Johnny Walker or something. Oh, a Johnny Walker. Now that's like Jameson or something. Throw them coffee. Mm, now we're talking. Ryan is a very fancy guy. He's got he's got class. He's a classy fella. I'm a classy man. Classy, classy. <laughs> yeah, I just like to drink, and I've you do. gone through a bunch of different stages. Yeah. Well, you you are you handle your liquor a lot better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Let's be real. I see, okay, Justin, he's seen me <laughs> drunk like nobody's business. And, that, yeah. and it's and it's like one, yeah, it's a rum and coke, man. It's adorable. <laughs> You'd feel that's, fucking just like. That's it. Wow. Yeah, I do his tolerance have, is not very high. I have a bottle. Of, so I got a couple of packages like from um, for swag and stuff. I got a little bottle of whiskey. I'm saving it for one night for this podcast. Oh, cool! Yeah. Gonna, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know if it's tonight though, because I'm not. I'm not feeling the whiskey. You should yeah. wait until I go out to California in a couple weeks. <gasps> yeah. There okay. Go. And we okay. have a little bit of whiskey. Sounds nice. Okay. Oh, it'd be good. It'd be good. Yeah. Be awesome. yeah. I can't wait, man. Although by the time this airs. That'll already happen. There'll be like a fucking time capsule. It's like the time machine. The t- oh, like fuck! In the future. Fuck, I want to tell you guys about one more movie. I'm sorry. Um, but Is it the time machine? No. Uh, no it's a guy called Pierce. Fucking Altered States. Have you seen this? No. I've heard it's, a lot about it. 
Oh my god. It's... When we start releasing these, we should have uh, viewers keep a running list of every movie that you suggest to me and or our guests. Yes. I think, I think I've written down idea. five of them so far. Uh, yeah. yeah. This one, but, uh, yeah. I, think, I think this movie would be basically the, and hold on, I'm checking one thing before I say this because I want to give the in, right information. But like, this is a movie that I remember seeing as a kid. And I remember, to be honest, no fucking clue what the movie was about. I, I remember like, what the, I don't know what just happened. I don't know like anything. I don't know. But I remembered, I remember the actual visual of it. I remember the feeling I got from the movie. I remember all of this shit. And it fucking blew my mind. It's like this. So, so, cut to. It's directed by Ken Russell. It has William Hurt and it has Blair Brown. And it's, it, it it's so hard. It's like if you watch this high, I think it will be like it will take you to a level that I can't even imagine. Because I, I was watching it last night again for the first time in a long time. Fucking and, and speaking of a movie that you wouldn't see get made today, the leads, you know, William Hurt and Blair Brown are fairly adultish. They're not kids. Um, and it is a horror sci-fi, weird so, sci-fi movie. They're naked a lot. They fuck a lot in it. Um, and it's it's they're just sitting around naked, like. That you don't see that in movies nowadays, very no, rarely. Not at all. You know, yeah. and it, but it was kind of refreshing. It's a good. It's a. It's a really. It's a mind fuck of a movie. I mean, it really is a mind fuck of a movie. It deals with those isolation tanks, those sensory isolation tanks, and I guess he connects to something. And I don't want to give too much away, but it's a. Uh, it's a really interesting. And my God, William Hurt was a handsome fella. God damn it. He's so good in that movie, too. Like, I'm such a fan of that guy. I remember it. I was like, oh, that guy was fucking rad back then. And he's still rad now, I think. So, yeah. I, um, even though I haven't seen either of these movies, I get The Rainbow, no, The Serpent and the Rainbow mm -hmm. and Altered States, uh, confused all the time. Um, They're very different. Films, yeah. Those are two films that I really want to check out. Altered States, I've heard a lot about. Um, yeah, and now that it's Halloween month, I I want to watch more horror films that I haven't seen instead of like rewatching ones that I've seen like a thousand times. I think that would be more beneficial. Just yeah, to see some shit that I've never seen, whether it's good or shitty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of. I think I'm in that mo mode too. Although I, I'm going to watch the classics though. I, I've got that Friday the Thirteenth box set coming. I'm going to watch every single one of those motherfuckers. Nice. Yeah, yeah. But Justin, see, here's the thing. The irony is Justin's not a huge horror guy at all. Yeah. What do you do true. for Halloween then? What do you, do you like have like a fucking, do you watch Halloween movies or do you watch? Uh, um, and I, I would watch ones that I, I have seen before and like, um, or maybe that I watched when I was a kid. Um, as I mean, as I've told you before, I I do like a lot of the slashers, um, but no, I just I, Halloween is something I, I I love the spirit of it. I love you know the the, the spooks mm -hmm. and and all that stuff. But I I I don't like it as much as I want to. I want to be able to get into it like everyone else, but I just I I don't find myself really taking the time although i am i which uh brian you don't know this but I, I i i stream on twitch i do like video game streams cool and uh yeah just something that i started doing to sort of you know some sort of creative outlet over quarantine yeah. but i've had a little bit of momentum with it so it's you know if i still have the time to do it it's something that is fun but um, what I am doing for the whole month of October, I'm, stre I'm streaming uh, like scary games. Mm. So nice. that's yeah, that's sort of my my celebration, I guess. Cool. Um, yeah, I feel like scary video games. Um, they are superior to 
uh, horror movies yeah. because you're putting yourself in the shoes of, you know, like the first player, like the actual person. Right. Character. Like, yeah. Who's experiencing like all this like crazy shit. Yeah. Um, you're have the you, one have, that has to walk through the halls. You can't just hide. Yeah. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can't just like hide your, yeah. Like close your eyes and lay your ears. Like you need to like, you need to be the one um, who's actually doing it. Do you have any, um, that you really particularly like or anything that you're planning on playing that you're excited to? Um, uh, yeah, I'm a huge uh, Resident Evil fan. And yeah. they they remade uh, the second and third one. And uh, I'm going to be playing through Resident Evil 2. I, I, I got it when it came out. I was really excited about it. Played a little bit of it. Never finished it, so I figured... And, and that's a perfect one. Um, yeah. I, I've been playing, uh, I, I sort of kicked off the, the spooky game month with um, Dead Island. It's like a... Uh, it's a zombie one, right? Yeah, it's like a first-person <laughs> zombie game. Uh, that one's a lot of fun. That, one's, uh, that one I've played before. Um, but yeah, those, those in particular, I, there's a ton of other ones that, like there's Until Dawn... Um, it's sort of like a, almost like a choose your own adventure type of thing. Um, has like Rami Malik in it. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, um, there's like walking dead games. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of options and I, I'm, I'm excited about it. Cause I feel like again, because the scary games are superior and there's so many people all over, all over the place that get really, really into the Halloween spirit that it's even more exciting to watch a streamer stream it because you get the scariness of the game and then you also get the, you know, you get me jumping at everything. So, yeah, and that's that, extra that, yeah, that adds to the entertainment value. Um, there's, yeah, there's uh, games like Amnesia for the PC oh, yeah. that is excellent. Um, Oh, like Silent Hill 2 is brilliant. Of course. Um, yeah, there's uh, the, I think the scariest video game that I've ever played, aside from Silent Hill 2, is um, a game called Fatal Frame. Yeah. 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 I, that, and that inspired a lot that. of, that, and that inspired a lot for the music box. But um, yeah, Jimmy, you basically play um, this uh, this girl who's looking for her twin sister, I think, in this like abandoned Japanese village, and you are armed with this uh, camera, and you don't have any weapons. The only thing that you can do is hide, and what you can do to harm these ghosts or to like kind of like damage their HP is you have to take pictures of these spirits, and they're all you know very different and very disturbing. And you just yeah. have to kind of just like stand there and just get your focus and like um, and all that stuff just right. And it kind of takes away from their power and their energy. And it is, um, yeah, it's one of those games that, you know, very easily you can just be like, I'm just not playing this anymore. I really? Do yeah. not, yeah, turn your console yeah. off, turn all the lights back on. It is horrifying. And it's kind of crazy because you think about it and you're like, how can a video game be scary? You know, it's it's a fucking video game. Like, who gives a shit? But when you actually, like, are, you know, doing the controls and you're, like, watching all this shit play and you really immerse yourself into yeah. that environment, just like you do a horror movie, man, it can totally get under your skin. And, yeah, um, yeah it's something that, you know, it, it it's very exhilarating because, man, it is, it, yeah, it's just completely different. It adds that extra fear level. Um, and it's fucking brilliant. That game is... Wow. Yeah. Great. Well, and especially a lot of newer games, just because um, games have become so much more cinematic mm. and and tell much better stories, and not to mention the amazing graphics. It's it's adds to the terror very very much. Mm -hmm. Well, half the time you see those commercials, and you're like, wait, wait, that's a that's a video game, but you're it, lo it looks like you're watching a Fast and Furious commercial. It it, it yeah, they're so amazing to look at. Right? Not a huge gamer, but like you can't deny the fucking, I mean the 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 quality that's in these games. You can't deny it. Certainly, and with some of the um, the older video games, um, the ones that are more old school, just like with movies, like it it has that grit 
and it has that kind of like yeah that older kind of like lower quality and somehow that kind of just adds to it um mm -hmm. yeah like with Silent Hill 2 they apparently um they were running into a lot of bugs and glitches in the map when you would run around as your character there would be some like bullshit so what they did is they covered it um in fog to kind of like hide these mistakes and unbeknownst to them at the time it just created this um you know further looming kind of mysterious atmosphere and it just adds so much to the game and it's it's crazy these like little happy accidents but um yeah there's some fantastic uh video games out there and i wish i was a gamer um it's just so very expensive but yeah, um, yeah. yeah there's a mm. lot of yeah a lot of entertainment value and a lot of um i love horror and and you know when you add to that fear of like being in the shoes of that character and yeah having to make these decisions you are the one walking down this dark hallway you are the one who yeah. has to like open the door and fight yeah. these ghosts instead of just merely watching it it's 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 really cool yeah I, I mean i've heard a lot of people talk about how you know they are they speculate that video video games are kind of like the future of storytelling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I, just, I think that's something there's something to be said about that that's cool i, I i've never thought about that because i'm I, look i'm not a huge gamer and i don't really I don't get the scares of the video, the horror video games. To me, I just feel like just. I, but I think that's mostly because I just really suck at them. Like I'm just really fucking bad. Like I can't, I can't play. But I, 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 I kind of, I'm kind of envious. Like like that passion, like from both of you, it's like that's really cool. It would be cool to be in. But I, I just, I think I tried to play one one video game I, I i can't remember what it was called it was a horror game and i i couldn't get past one stupid thing of just i don't even remember was i had to light something on fire and i couldn't do it and i was just like fuck you i'm going to die i don't care i'm so <laughs> bad and it was, i i wish i i wish i had that i don't have that you know i've never been good at video games just never have i'm good at board games that, that's the, I mean, I'm I'm sure there's people streaming that too. Yeah, per perhaps. Sure. Yeah, man. There's fucking people that are streaming their D and D campaigns, yeah. and um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of these uh, board games that um, uh, there's one uh, from the thing, and it's like, oh, oh yeah. you're all yeah, and you're you're yeah, you're like you're all scientists, but one person in your party, you don't know who, but they're the thing, they're the alien. That's and really cool. Yeah, and you know, it's I love like, that. Yeah, love it's kind of like this game called Resistance. Um, yeah, it's like who is trying to infiltrate your mission, and and with that comes kind of like you know, suspense and it elevates, and you know, there there's um, there's opportunity to derive thrills and suspense and fear in every platform, whether it be board game or video game or movie. Um, I personally think, yeah, like even though I'm not a gamer, like video games like hold it superior or hold like the highest rank because you know again you're in like the shoes of like the character and you're doing shit but shit man board games can also be like tense as fuck too yeah absolutely because yeah. i mean uh, there's also that competitive nature to it still sure too. yeah yeah you want to be on top and yeah you want to you know like when you your 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 partner like gets get something that you want or or you lose it's always fun to just take the board and just throw it on the floor and go nobody said nobody the that's how every game of monopoly ends right yeah i it's i i played one monopoly game in high school and four hours later it's two in the morning <laughs> i just i voluntarily quit i'm like i gotta go home i'm sorry <laughs> yeah it's time it's time that yeah i definitely get that but they have the new, the, all the cool monopolies now. Though I like have a Lord of the Rings monopoly. It's yeah, so it's every every like, especially now, every like video, a lot of video Everything. games even and movies, they all have their own board game. I think I think it's cool. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just bought. I bought the speaking of dark delicacies. I bought the Friday the Thirteenth board game, which I'm really oh, excited yeah. about playing. I I, I and be, but because of COVID, I haven't really been able to play it. I haven't been like. I haven't been able to find people that would be in the mood to play. 
you know? So I'm like, God damn it. I want to play my game. Jesus Christ. I want COVID to end. I want yeah. everyone to be healthy again. That's what I want. Um, did either of you guys see the South Park pandemic special? I did not. Mm, no, no, I didn't. It was all right. Yeah. I, that's all I they, have to say. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they always kind of hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Whenever, well, whenever they do like their, you know, kind of uh, uh, social, like current events kind of things. Yeah, man, there's some shit in there. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, it, like South Park is the only only show that could get away with that shit, man. It is yeah. just like, oh, my God. It is. But it's, you know, not all of it lands, but a lot of it does. And mm-hmm. it was very, um, it was very political, um, but in a way that it wasn't like pandering, but it was just at a level that I've never seen from South Park. You know, they were really taking into consideration like how serious like some things are. And um, and it's like, an, it's an hour long and there are like some subplots. I'm like, not all of it's very funny. Some of it is, but um, yeah, it's on like southparkstudios.com. It's like 45 minutes long and it's worth a watch. Yeah, go yeah. check it out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as long as those guys have been doing it, the fact that they're still getting anything to land, good on them. Yeah, for real. Yeah. When has yeah. Simpsons been funny? I haven't seen, Sim- you know, it's like that's, that show, I mean, look, I get it. It's been on forever, and I, I respect the fuck out of that. But the last time I watched The Simpsons and actually laughed, like, regularly was, I don't even remember. Um, a while ago, yeah. yeah. I am a big Simpsons fan. I was, was not nice. allowed to watch it as a child, mm. uh, so I just didn't. But um, yeah. My my parents didn't mind, but I, I, I think I just kind of, <clears throat> I gravitated a lot at one point to Family Guy. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, there was kind of like a a prime period of Family Guy as well, then it kind of dropped off. I've heard that it's kind of brought itself back around to being really good again, but I haven't watched it in so long. But I, I don't know, that's that's kind of the thing with those long-running TV shows where it's, how at what point does it become you're keeping it alive just for like the novelty as opposed to keeping it alive because there's still more content from it right <clears throat> yeah it's just because they're getting you know more seasons confirmed by the studio but yeah it's not like they're trying to like tell a story they're not sure they're not no. like going for an ending they're just yeah it's very episodic and um you know, they all kind of like influence each other. Simpl- Simpsons influenced South Park, which influenced mm. Family Guy. Yeah. And then Simpsons kind of had to change their their shtick. And yeah, they're all, yeah, like all three of those are just, even though I haven't really watched a whole lot of Simpsons, but they're not like where they used to be. And um, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that it is what it is. Well, speaking of is what it is, I think we are about at that time to what do you yeah. th- what do you say, guys? Or uh, we it's funny because when we do the show, we really know it's we really kind of free ourselves up and just do whatever the fuck we want to do. Um, but I, I'm I went into I, this from the start, kind of up there. Yeah, I did. So too. I yeah, I, I felt like I didn't contribute as much as usual. That's but, right. Uh, no, I think that it just was allowed fun. me to talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As much as I wanted. Um, but this was fun. Yeah. Thank, thank you guys yeah, for definitely. having me on. I really appreciate it. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Definitely yeah, be done to do it again. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. For sure, dude. And it, yeah, look, it's a, it's a fun little thing. And it's a way to just came, kind of take our minds off of everything that's going on and not really, I don't know, just to expand our minds a little bit, maybe get some other options, other ideas. And, and not just talk about the same old fucking shit all over, you know? Of course. Well, and especially in the times that we're in and everything that's on the news, I feel like every other show and podcast is probably talking about the same thing. And I don't know. I Maybe this is blowing smoke up my ass, but I feel like this is kind of a breath of fresh air for people because we're talking about whatever. We're talking about totally different things most of the time. So yeah. you're welcome, honestly, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're fucking welcome. Well, this yeah. was cool. Yeah, I had a lovely time. 
Yeah, anytime you guys uh, want another person on, just hit me up. Okay, to... definitely. What are you, uh, uh, I guess, uh, to have people tell, you know, that whole thing where you uh, got him high. Yeah, <laughs> yeah go yeah. ahead and take uh, take the time to promote what you want to promote. Where can people yeah. find you? There you go. Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram at the Music Box Short Film. And any, yeah, any updates, any additional like film festivals that we win, do shout outs for other crew members. Um, that's where you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. And yeah, again, like we were talking about, hopefully in like six more months, we can start uh, making this a lot more public and people can get their eyes on it, check it out for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. Well, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, you too, Jimmy. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks. Thanks for, thanks for thanking me. I appreciate that very yeah, much. Of course. You deserve it. Thanks every uh, now and then. Once you know, in a while. Not don't, too many. Don't, I don't want you to get an ego. My ego's so the show's going to be over. <laughs> yeah. Then we'll be like beating each other up and it'll be like. Then you'll, you'll like, you'll secede and you'll have your own podcast and then we'll just like, I'll have to start my own too. And it'll just be like beefing podcasts. Yeah, yeah, I know, and I, I think I would just be sad. Like, my podcast would be just, I'm so sad, I'd just cry the whole fucking time because it wasn't you, this, you know? I mean, there's this. an audience for grown men crying, I'm sure. Probably. You probably, probably got that, that, that market corner, to be honest. Maybe, maybe. So. Maybe we'll try an episode, maybe. We could try, yeah. Cry. Give a shot, yeah. yeah. Ryan, you can come That's on, possible. we'll cry. The three yeah. of us. We'll cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easy, and of course, yeah. Where, where, Justin? Did you say where we find you? Oh no, remember? we always forget <laughs> about this. Yes, we do. <laughs> so, um, yeah, because of the lack of uh, acting work, you can find me uh, on twitch.tv slash Justin underscore. But um, streaming all the time these days uh, during these crazy times, and um, which will be starting to release these towards the end of october uh so for anyone yeah. that's possibly catching this is this, this episode is not going to come out in october no it's not probably anyway not, so. but if you go to uh youtube.com uh j butts gaming j b u t t s gaming uh i do post all of my past streams on that youtube channel so if you go there you can rewatch the spoopy season of streams. So how about that? And you can also find me on Instagram at justinbutts94. And Give of me course, a follow right now. Oh please shit! Do, please. And I gotta say, uh, what I'm most excited about now is that at some point we will be doing a full episode on Justin Butts, just that name, and just what he went through with that name. Yeah, we, that's right. That that's gotta, something you've been meaning to bring up since the start. <laughs> Jesus Christ, and, I, and, it, and it's so stupid because it doesn't even, it didn't phase me. I, I didn't think, ooh, 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 ooh. but I just, right. I can imagine. But yeah, you can find me at showblow.com, uh, arrowinthehead.com, and um, I, We Live Entertainment and uh, Sounds Scary, my little show. And thank you, Ryan, for everything you do on that show. And uh, yeah, that's it. And of course, Twitter and um, Facebook and Instagram and Snap and Wherever I'm, if it's social, I apparently I'm, I'm really bad at it, but I'm I'm there. So he's there. I'm there. All right. Well, uh, thank you everybody for watching, and we'll see you all in the next one.